going to be in Psalm 124 today. So if you would, turn your Bible to Psalm 124.
going to share with you some that will be really good and some that will be really bad. And I'm going to call it Iffin. What Iffin God wasn't. You know, I'm just going to call it like I talk it. So we'll get along with that in just a few moments. But David goes through a series of what ifs. What if God was or what if God wasn't with us? And we'll hear him say in one of the Psalms I've read that he's on our side. there, I had a conversation, in fact, I had two conversations this week to remind Christians that God is on our side. Amen. I guess that's one of my jobs to do that. We should it be? Don't we? Shouldn't we already know that God's on our side if He saves us? So what if He wasn't on your side? Just keep that, mind, that thought in your mind. So let me describe two different kinds of personalities or two different kinds of people, two different kinds of men. First of all, let's think about a self-made man. Have you ever known anybody or described somebody as they're a self-made millionaire? They worked their lives to make a million dollars. That was their goal. Well, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to do anything I can to get rich. And I'm going to do it. I will be self-made, I'll promote myself, I'll brag on myself, I want to be seen. I want you to know that I've made a million bucks. Now a million bucks today is probably not like a bunch of years ago. So I started to change that to a billionaire, but it doesn't matter, you get the meaning. I'm a self-made person. I've done it. And then look at King David. Remember the Bible says that he was a man after God's own heart. David was not a self-made king. David was a God-made king. There was nothing about David that says, look at me. Look what I've accomplished. David knew the whole time that he was serving God that it was God that lived before him. It was God that surrounded David when he was down with his arms and picked him up and encouraged him. It was God who became number one in David's heart. If you were to talk to David back then, he would tell you that everything that he had accomplished it was because God had allowed him to, or maybe God had made him accomplish those things. So we see a self-made man, and we see a God-made man. So we're going to look at Psalm 124 with that thought in mind, and, and David starts out in Psalm 124 verse 1 with that word, if. So let's read it together. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, David acknowledges that God is on his side. Now, I think that maybe David was reminiscing about all those things that God had done for him, how God had protected him. Remember when King Saul heard the, the people singing, Saul just so, uh, slew a few people, but David 10,000 and Right at that moment, Saul, King Saul got a jealousy in his heart, an anger in his heart, a hatred in his heart for King David, and he tried to kill him. He, he chased him all over the countryside trying to kill David. I think maybe David was reminiscing how God protected him. You know, Saul had the army. He could have caught David and killed him, but God protected David. Remember when David was sitting at the supper table? I'm not sure they called it supper table back then, but at our house it's the supper table. And King David picked up the spear, he got so angry and jealous of David that he threw that spear and tried to pin him against the wall. I think maybe David was reminiscing how God had made that spear miss him. King Saul was a mighty warrior too. He could have hit David had it not been for God being on David's side. So let's pause a minute. And I want us to remember some things about Hillcrest Baptist Church. I want us to reminisce about what God has done for our church. All that God has done in the past, you can look back and see that God was on our side. God has never left this church. He's never forsaken this church. Look at this sanctuary we're in right now. Man didn't build this. God 
God built this sanctuary. He used us to, to do it, but God supplied everything about it. Look at all the, the people that have been saved in this church and baptized in this church. And, and some of them have gone out in the world to preach the gospel. And missionaries have gone out and we've got ministers all over the place that have left this, this church. And God has used them for the glory of the kingdom of God. Look at yourselves. You're sitting in the pew today because God brought you here. I got a card that said they were so glad that we welcomed them into our church. God brought you to our church. We're very grateful for that. God has brought every single person to this church. And we try to welcome you the best we can, but it's because God is right here with us. He is on our side. And let me tell you, the best way I know how to, don't you forget it. God is always on His, on our side, those that belong to the Lord Jesus. I had a conversation with two people this week about that. But one is a really dear friend, and she goes through stuff all the time. I'm constantly reminding her, God is on your side. around and I think about some of us now right now and some of the things that we go through health wise. But you're here today, aren't you? If you hear my voice, you're here today. God is on your side. You can claim it. He never will leave you or forsake you. And the neat thing about that, if you weren't here and something happened and you passed away, guess what? You're in a much better place than we are right now. I mean, that's it, the, the truth of the matter. So I think he was reminiscing about what all God had done. So please, church, reminisce about what God has done for Hillcrest Baptist Church. We begin to worship God because of what he's done in the past as we look forward to what he's going to do in the future. Amen. Keep on going with me. And uh, look how he acknowledges the what if in, in verses 2 through 5. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive with their wrath that was kindled against us when they, the waters would have overwhelmed us, the stream would have gone over ourselves, then the swollen river waters would have gone all over us and destroyed us. When men rose up against David and his army, without God, they would have been doomed. David knew it. And in verse 3, he starts out then. So without God then, they would have been swallowed up, the Bible says, alive. They would have been destroyed. They would have been killed. And back then when they killed you, sometimes they cut your head off, sometimes they cut your hands off, sometimes they did horrible things to your body. Nobody wanted to be killed by an enemy back then. Sometimes they take the kings and, and they had them remember John the Baptist got beheaded and they put his head on, on a platter and served it. It was terrible to be killed by the enemy. What if God wasn't with David at that time? Guess what? We wouldn't have the book of Psalms. We wouldn't have 1st and 2nd Samuel. We wouldn't have the things about David. We'd uh, just be sunk because we wouldn't have David. Teach us things. Without God, the streams would have drowned in them. The waters would have overwhelmed them. So let me share with you an example of how God took care of his people. Run over to Exodus chapter 14. And I know that you know this by heart, but anyways, let's read it. Exodus 14 verses 21 through 28. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go by the back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went in the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on the right and to the left. And the Egyptians pursued them and went after them into the midst of the sea, all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning, watched that the Lord looked down upon them, an army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians. Took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. In fact, all of them. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, horsemen, and all the army that came into the sea after them, and not so much as one of them to remain. What if God had not, not been there for Moses? What do you think would have happened? Probably Israelites would have been some of them would have been killed, taken back to Egypt. Moses would have been killed. He would have been destroyed. What if God wasn't with his people? How many times can you look back on your life and see that God had left you? Never. God has never left. Always, always been there. Uh, I want to share with you something that happened this Wednesday night that's pretty personal. As we're what if realizing that without God we could be devoured. And it doesn't have to be a whole army to devour us. It could be one person against one other person to get devoured. So Wednesday night, felt all day Wednesday that we needed to go out in the parking lot and pray where the Family Life Center is going to be built. And we had a wonderful time out in the parking lot, straight out there. And there was a, a lot of us here, and many prayed, really wonderful prayers. Lord be with us, guide us through this. And remembered some of the things that God has done for our church. There was some praising going on, a lot of praying. Just a good time really good time. And if you were here, did you feel the presence of God out there with us? Did you feel good when you left? Kind of like you were walking on spiritual cloud nine? Well, we were over there, and my truck was parked over here. And one of our church members came to me. Most of you had already left. And he looked me straight in the eye. He said, I think we can do this. We can build something and make it work. Our people won't commit to it. And he really got put out. What if God had been with your pastor that night? What do you think I would have done had God not been with me Wednesday night? Rhonda knows my past. I'm not sure that guy would be alive right now. I'm bigger than he was. <laughs> now, if it had been somebody bigger than me, he's going to be alive today. But I believe I could have took him. You know what I mean? That's the old guy. God was with me, and I didn't get mad. I didn't get upset. I did share some scripture with him. I reminisced what God had done in our past. I told him what God is doing right now and what he's going to do in the future which gave me an opportunity to share with him that he needed to get on his knees and get right with God and to ask forgiveness and, and uh, realize that God is still on his side too if he's a born again child of God. What if God hadn't been with me that night, Wednesday night? I could have quit. I could have been discouraged. You know what he did, actually? He encouraged me. Because I know what God has done for our church. I know what God is going to do for our church. And I know what God has put on my heart to do. And so his negative, God used for encouragement. Because I'm telling you right now, I know that God's on my side. Is God on your side? Shake your head, yes, if you're a child of God, because he is. That's just an example of what could be a what if. -y. And I feel bad for those that don't have God on their side. It's a, it's what, this whole message.
here's my heart about that. What about all those souls that can't say God is on their side? What if God is not in my presence? What if God isn't encouraging me? What if God isn't my God? What if, if God isn't taking care of my needs? What if God is not watching over my health? And there are billions of people in that boat. What if? You see the, the, the possibilities. What if it could be a great possibility if he is on my side, or what if it's not? It can be a great possibility of what happens when he's not on your side. It can make your mind just go and expand in your thought process and it can encourage you or discourage you either way. Which brings us to verses 6 and 7, praising God for his protection. Look at verse 6 and 7. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us its prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the shear, the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Have you ever thought about what the Lord would do if he wasn't on your side here lately? Have you gone through discouraging times? Have you been through times when maybe you were unemployed? Or you went to the doctor and you heard a diagnosis that wasn't very pleasant. And that's what sometimes we do as Christians. We, oh no, I've heard this and it's just devastating. What am I going to do? Well, go ahead and feel like that for a short time. But realize God is on your side. Whatever the circumstance is that you're going through, He'll lift you right up out of it. He'll carry you through it. He's got a purpose for your life, for your, for your whole life. You may be going through something really crummy right now, but he's got a purpose down here that he's going to use this crummy to get you over there. That makes sense? Maybe he's going to allow you to go through something because you're stronger than somebody else and you'll get through it and you'll be able to tell somebody that's a little bit weaker in their faith what God did for you. Think about all the circumstances you've gone through and look back and see whether God's ever left you or not. And you know he has to. If you're here this morning, hear me, God has never left you. So the question becomes, remember David is writing these songs so that they can worship God as they, and prepare their hearts to, to worship God as they get to the mountain of God. He's written these songs for us. Have you ever gone through some pretty crummy circumstances in your life? Go ahead and shake your head, yes, with all of us have. You know, God brought you through that circumstance. Here's the hard one. Did you give a verbal praise to God in front of people, a testimony before people to let them know what God did for you? seen men lay in their hospital beds and go through major surgery. They're going to die from heart problems. I, I can think of two right now. That God pulled them through those heart surgeries. One major six bypasses. I think just he needed a whole new heart, but they didn't do that. He was on that close to dying. And they pulled him through. He's alive today. And he told me and one of our deacons that when I get out of this hospital, I'm going to go to church, get up here, and tell everybody what God has done for me. And you've yet to hear that man give testimony. And he's not coming anymore. I think God's convicted him. I don't know why. What if God wasn't on your side? He very well could just withdraw his presence from us, but he doesn't. So our testimony ought to be, look what God has done for me. Now let me go a little bit further. Our testimony right now ought to be, look what God's done for our church. How many churches can tell from the pulpit that they have $1.1 million in their checking account? Probably a handful. 
How many churches can say they spent $40,000 replacing this, this carpet and never missed a penny of it? Or how many churches can say they put $50,000 in a sign out there and never missed a penny of that? And how many churches can say they replaced all the air conditioner units, about 14 of them, and never missed a penny of that?
300 men to destroy army after army after army. You know why? Because God was on Gideon's side. God provided for Sam, uh, Gideon in the past. He provided for Gideon at that moment. For the next 40 years, he provided for Gideon. For us, God has been gracious to us in the past. He's gracious to us right now. And he's going to be gracious to us in the future. Thank you, God, for what you've done for us. Jesus in your heart today. We can take care of that, can't we? We're, we're going to have an opportunity in a minute. We're going to have an invitation. And what an invitation is, I invite you to come forward with any problem, with anything you want to pray about. But especially if you don't have Jesus in your heart, just come on down here. I'll be right there. And say, Brother Jerry, I want Jesus. Boy. Jesus in your heart right now. I want you to look back and reminisce in the past, the now, and the future. And as we have an invitation, why don't you thank God for the past? Thank Him for now and thank Him for the future. God is not going to leave our church. He's not going to forsake our church. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Father Almighty, I do thank you for being our God, our Lord, our Savior. Thank you, Lord, that we can talk to you today. We can pray to you. The Holy Spirit abides in us and takes our words right to you. Father, even if we mess up our words, he knows what's on our heart and he takes it straight to the Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us in the past. You've been on our side in the past. You're on our side right now. And God, you'll be on our side in the future. In fact, those of us who know you, you'll be on our side for eternity. Forever. I pray, God, for those who do not have you in their heart. God, today would be a great day for them to give their life to you. I pray for us, Father, that, that as we think about the future, I pray, Lord, that we remember all that you've done for us now. We'll give you praise and glory for it, Lord. You're the one that put that money in our bank account. You're the one that provided the money for the carbon the air conditioning. Sign. Father, for everything that we've done, you've provided for us. You continue to provide for us. Thank you, dear Jesus. Father, we pray these things in his name. Amen. Amen. We're going to stand. We're going to stand. The invitation is if you need to make a decision for Jesus, come on forward and let's pray about it.